The spirit of our island is strong. She is vibrant and rooted in culture. When she sleeps, we call it winter. When she celebrates her beauty, we call it autumn. And when she sings, we call it Celtic colors. For hundreds of years in these mountains and along these shores, we've kept our traditions alive. When we speak, when we play, when we dance, Now, we invite people from far and wide to share our island. Add a voice, lend an ear, and try a step. To see, to hear, to experience. Cape Breton Islands, Celtic Colors International Festival. Nova Scotia's Cape Breton Island will inspire like no other place. Explore this natural beauty. Let its wild energy lift your spirit. Be adventurous, be in awe, and be truly free. Connect with our island and reconnect with yourself. This fall, be here. Cape Breton Island, your heart will never leave. One note can change everything. It begins a melody that leads to a song that is sung by many and enjoyed by more. TD is proud to be an instrument of change by supporting 90 community programs and over 80 festivals across Canada. Because one note can start something big, build confidence, and bring a community together. Welcome to Cape Breton Island, the Celtic heart of North America. This small island welcomes you with its huge heart. Here, you can jump into the culture, dance to lively fiddle tunes, learn a Gaelic milling song, and enjoy traditional meals. Experience firsthand North America's only living Celtic culture. Music is the heartbeat of the island, with sessions always close at hand. You can soak it in or jam with some of the world's finest Celtic musicians. The stunning, diverse beauty of this award-winning island. Its sweeping hills, popping colors, and majestic waters promises to both soothe and invigorate all who visit. Cape Breton offers down-home hospitality with its soul-inspiring music and earnest storytelling. You may arrive a visitor, but are sure to leave as a friend. Start your journey today at CelticHeart.ca. Ready? I was born ready. <laughs> Sid, it's working. Hockey card season is back at Tim Hortons. Get your Tim Hortons NHL trading cards today. Collect them all, plus play on the app for a chance to meet Sid. Hope you uh, get a Nate McKinnon in there. I'm extremely proud to be Nova Scotian. Art is something we want to make sure is continuing to tell our stories. Culture is what makes us human. Art, music, film. It is 
what adds color to our world. And if you have a vibrant arts community, those that are looking at moving somewhere, that's a part of what they're looking for. Because Nova Scotia Gaming has support for culture. All of these barriers are sort of removed and you can like really have an opportunity to grow. service calls can happen anywhere. We'll be there to make the link. Atlantic Lottery is proud to sponsor the Celtic Colors International Festival. Last year, I had the chance to explore the beautiful cabin trail, so let's take a look at all the places that I went and all the cool things that you can experience at this year's festival. Through areas of study like history, Gaelic, and music, Cape Breton University recognizes the important role traditions play in the cultural life of Cape Breton Island. Working together with Celtic Colors, Cape Breton University is helping to bring live traditional music, song, and dance into schools across Cape Breton Island. Cape Breton University and Celtic Colors, working to keep our traditions alive.
Our coastline here in Cape Breton is an unkept beauty and people don't tamper with it too much. It's just left in its most pure state. And same with the music. It too is very organic in how it is learned and how it is passed on. The comment I most often get is, we're going to Cape Breton, what should we do? What should we see? And so I always direct them to a square dance in West Mabu or any of the square dances. As long as they get a square dance in, that's really important. I think that's the highlight. And I can remember the most awesome house parties and the music would go on far into the night. I remember falling asleep in a corner, you know, and you'd feel the vibration of the stomp of the foot from the fiddler and you'd hear the tunes just wafting through the air and I used to be so comforted by that sound. My name is Natalie McMaster. I'm from Troy, Cape Breton Island. Wow, this is a beautiful find. The greatest thing about medicine is our medicines stood the test of time. They're gifts from the creator, but they're also <laughs> the knowledge that's passed on from generation to generation. This is when you were born. And then here, these are all your medicines, all the things that you're gonna do in life. And then when you go back, you're an elder. And you walk like this, and you're hunched over until you back in the spirit world. Our ancestors, our grandfathers, our grandmothers were able to treat every ailment known to man. If I have a, a, an ailment, I'll ask any one of my brothers who are medicine keepers. I know where they got it. I know the family that harvested it. So I know their prayers are already strong. When I receive a medicine, I offer tobacco for it. And I pray that that medicine will help me in any way. It's, they're delicious. They're full of vitamin C, and it's just amazing. The medicine is my sense of place, my sense of belonging, what I've learned, and what I'm willing to pass on to future generations. We think we're number one because we're the home of a strong Mi'kmaq culture since time of memorial. Because we have more fiddlers per capita than anywhere in the world. We think we're number one because we have the finest lobster and seafood. We have one of the most scenic drives in the world. We think we're number one because we have the largest historical reconstruction in North America. Because the Bredor Lakes are UNESCO biosphere. Because we have amazing trails and we have one of the top national parks in Canada. Because of our rich Acadian culture and joie de vie. We think we're number one because we have world-class golf courses. Nova Scotia's Cape Breton Island has called out to the hearts of travelers for hundreds of years, inspiring their minds and reviving their spirits. Follow your heart. It will lead you to the journey of a lifetime. Experience one of the world's most scenic drives, the Cabot Trail, rising from the sea, clinging to mountains, a winding staircase that will take you from majestic ocean vistas to quiet fishing villages. Plan a few days to enjoy every moment. Savor a masterpiece. Our island is renowned as a hiker's paradise, a challenging beauty that calls out to be explored. Breathtaking landscapes await you.
travel through time at the Fortress of Lewisburg, the largest historical reconstruction of its kind in North America. Walk the streets where world powers fought for control of a continent. Cape Breton, one of the first multicultural societies in North America, the heart of the Mi'kmaq Nation, where ancestry is treasured and deep and alive in the roots of communities. Delve into the mind of a genius. Learn of our storied past. You may even learn something about yourself. Be moved by our living cultures. Join in a square dance. Step to the jigs and the rollicking reels. Watch our artisans at work creating their treasures. Find a unique serenity as you pause in the heart of the island or chart a course on the Bredore Lakes, a designated UNESCO biosphere and Canada's largest inland sea. Leave your footprints on our shores. They will be welcomed by gentle waters and rolling surf. Anticipate larger-than-life encounters. The island resonates with the voices of generations before us. We hold our traditions close, and it's a tradition to share what we have with our visitors. Discover and embrace Cape Breton Island. Your heart will never leave. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the arrival of His Honor, the Honorable Arthur LeBlanc, Lieutenant Governor of Nova Scotia, and Her Honor, Mrs. Patsy LeBlanc.
Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Causeway Cayley. How are you tonight? How's your Celtic colors been? You all look so fresh-faced, handsome, beautiful, all ready to go, or is it just mania? Is it manic at this point? Is that what it is after nine nights at the uh, Festival Club? My name is Steve Sutherland. I'm the host of Information Morning on CBC Radio in Cape Breton, and I am pleased and honored to be your MC on the final official show of Celtic Colors 2019. We're calling this the Causeway Cayley. We are perched on the edge of Cape Breton, on the edge of the Canso Causeway, on the right side of the Causeway. And when I say right, I mean the awesome side. And we have an awesome way to round out the 23rd edition of Celtic Colors for you tonight. We have someone who has not been back since 2004 to help us close off this year's concert series. We also have a couple of bands who are bookending both the Atlantic and Celtic Colors, who have helped to shape the personality of your 23rd annual Celtic Colors. In Beolik and Brebach, our artists in residence, bands who are steeped in the deep tradition of the music that we celebrate with the International Festival, and bands who also look ahead with a spirited and original take on where that music is going, representing both sides of the Atlantic, in Cape Breton and in Scotland. Before we get going tonight, I have a couple of shout-outs. Anyone here go to St. FX? <laughs> All right, today was St. FX Day at Celtic Colors. We have some Zaverians in the audience, so if you see that very distinctive ring, feel free to give them a big welcome to the closing concert of Celtic Colors. Also, we want to uh, welcome some other special guests. Where's the gang from L'Arche, Cape Breton? Can we hear you? All right. Our friends are here from L'Arche, Cape Breton. L'Arche is part of an international network of communities for people of differing abilities and the people who choose to spend their lives with them, established by Canadian Jean Vanier. And I know one thing about people at L'Arche, Cape Breton. They love to dance, they love to sing, they love to see dancing and singing, and they're going to get a lot of chance to do that tonight. So big round of applause for our friends at L'Arche, Cape Breton who are here with us tonight. Good to have you. We're also live streaming tonight, thanks to our live stream partners. So, hello world, world Port Hawkesbury, Port Hawkesbury the world. Thank you very much for joining us tonight. And to get us started tonight, we're very excited to be presenting back for the first time since 2004, someone who has established herself as a distinctive and renowned solo artist, having performed in some of the most important showcases on the planet, from London and Paris to New York, she has been nominated as Singer of the Year by BBC Radio 2. She has been introduced to an entirely new generation of fans as the person who sang the theme song for the animated show Brave. And speaking of Brave, she actually recorded that when she was eight months pregnant, apparently. And among connections to Celtic Colors and performing with Cape Breton artists elsewhere in the world, she also has another Cape Breton connection in performing in front of 50,000 people on the closing weekend for Run Rig, one of the most popular exports from Scotland, when the lead singer, of course, was Cape Breton's own Bruce, Guth Bruce Guthrow. So please welcome back, after a decade and a half to the stage here at Celtic Colors, Julie Fowlis. Hello! Kim at a house of. Of course, you look at all y'all. Ha na hlach go of y edash a Celtic colour simply on the. I guess how many fathach and chen a geish doctor chen. A decade and a half since I've been here. It's when it gets into decades when you're counting. That's when you know you're getting on a bit. Hello, how are you all doing? Yeah. You're all very welcome. I'm. Um, and it's a great pleasure to be here and to be back at Celtic Colours, um, especially on the closing night. Uh, it's such a special evening, and especially with uh, Brebach and Beolach to come also. And we're so delighted to be sharing the stage with them. So we'd like to start off this evening with um, a song of the supernatural. And uh, this is a, a song of the seal people. 
the seal creatures. And uh, I learned this from the sing of the Reverend Wally Matheson of North Uist and Edinburgh. And uh, it's very simply called Orn and Wrong, or the seal song. I hope you guys coming in can see you okay. You all all right? Yeah? You all okay? Very good. So we'll start off with this. This is Orn and Ron. Thank you. 
we've, uh, we're really happy to be uh, in, in Cape Breton in Nova Scotia and um, we've been on tour for the last week or uh, 10 days or so um, in the United States and having a lovely time. Um, and we decided that we'd uh, work our route into Cape Breton in a very handy fashion, so we flew yesterday from Orlando. Uh, we'd like to sing for you now a song which is uh, connected to, to lochs. And um, I, late in my life, I discovered the, the sport of rowing, and I started to... Uh, in my spare time over the last couple of years, I've started competitively rowing, kind of sculling in these very lightweight kind of racing boats. And um, a couple of weeks before we came on tour, I decided to undertake a, a challenge to, to do a marathon row from one end of Loch Ness to the other. And uh, the week before the race, there was a, a big study published at home and scientists had spent a year and a half uh, analysing millions and millions of DNA samples to find out what really is in the loch. <laughs> and so as someone who was going to race this enormous loch in a very small boat, I was watching the results of the study with great interest. <laughs> and uh, the, re the results showed that there was um, almost, almost, almost definitely not uh, a large you know, dinosaur type creature in there. But there could be a giant, enormous eel. <laughs> Which didn't actually make me feel much better in that tiny boat. <laughs> um, and when I was out there, I did, I was thinking, no wonder people used to think that there were creatures in there. It's pretty terrifying looking into the depths. And this next song is about. Uh, uh, the Erushke, the water horse, and um, in the song there's a girl and she's uh, been kidnapped by this uh, creature, taken away to the Hisloch, and in the song she's begging him to let her go. And uh, yeah, it's quite a scary story actually. If there are any children in the audience, um, he, he lets her go in the end. It's our Halloween special.
Timbora, Pede de Shore Timbora, Mitte Timbora, A Coni Mitte Timbora, A Fere Timbora, Mitte Timbora, A Fere Timbora, Smora, Pede de Shore Timbora, Mitte Timbora, A Coni Mitte Timbora, A Fere Timbora, Mitte Timbora, A Fere Timbora, Smora, Pede de Shore Timbora, Mitte Timbora, A Coni Mitte Thanks very much indeed. Give Julie a chance to get her breath back for the next song. But uh, there were a couple of Irish tunes and a couple of Scottish tunes. And it's, uh, we have to get a kind of a, a balance in the group here because two of us are Irish, you see. 
And as you know yourself, the Irish and the Scottish, we get on very well most of the time. But uh, so the first tune was um, a Push de Bail, uh, followed up there by uh, Feridun Vor, it's called. And we played a couple of tunes then um, with the Minister Not Dance and the Soup Dragon, I think. And we back to front. And we finished on an Irish tune written by Niall Valley, a great concertina player from County Armagh, uh, called The Oblique Jig. So, we're going to do something a little bit different now for you. Um, do we have any fans of the Beatles here? Yeah. Well, many uh, years ago now, we were uh, invited to translate um, our favourite track from the Beatles' White Album and um, reimagine it, re record it um, for a, a commemorative CD. And so we chose one of our favourites, and we're going to do that one for you now. But we'd like to invite a special guest up. And um, I remember seeing this video when it went viral online as a speaker of Scottish Gaelic, um, who uh, very much feels part of the tradition, but also happy to try and experiment with it too at times. And having done something like this, I was so excited to hear uh, Emma Stevens' version of uh, Blackbird in Mi'kmaq. And we'd like to invite her to the stage now to do a little duet. Give it a big welcome.
Jason. Such a such a privilege to get to, to sing with our dad. Um, and as I understand it, the language is under so so under threat, so endangered, and um, this is the time to save it. So we I think we as Gales we understand that message too. So these languages should always be celebrated and supported when they can. Okay, has the year and you thought first given is that really was a spear is really a little for a broken I guess a notion tall pain that are on tradition to these are two wee songs that are really lively the porridge man for a broken and sweet voice Donald.
Well, uh, we're down a fiddle string. He's only got... Uh, I told you to buy the expensive ones, Duncan. It's okay, at least it's not live streamed or anything. Um, <laughs> 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 Now the Vashni Gopa did project um either of facing the Atlantic with him or any kind of stock with him no play on the nest. I guess uh Kudima Vakar uh Coulter uh Kell, I guess Oring as a as a da art you on the Galicia I guess uh on the Nalapa. Um so we'd like to sing this song for you now, which is a song that just one of these songs, which the first time I heard it, it just, um, it just never left me. I just completely fell in love with it. And um, it was a song from the northwest region of Spain, from Galicia. And um, like all good Gaelic songs, it's uh, utterly depressing. Um, <laughs> I mean, I could you not know. But uh, the thing that Gales are good at, is, I think, is, is talking about all the heartbreaking. And it's, it's good, you know, it's like counselling, really, Gaelic songs. Um, and the, the, the lovely people of Galicia, Spain, have the same open channels of emotion, I think. And uh, this is a, a, a song which is called Camarinas that I was um, given by Galicia Macmillan. Um, he plans, he's probably the only mm. man on the planet who's fluent in both Scottish Gaelic and Galician. So I'm going to sing it for you now in the, in the two languages. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. This is Camarinas.
Camarinhas, camarinhas, já me vas camarinhando. Camarinhas, camarinhas, já me vas camarinhando. Por um de camarinhas, vivo. Oh
Thanks very much indeed. Uh, we finished that set of tunes there with one that Duncan here on the fiddle wrote. This is Mr. Duncan Chisholm on the fiddle from Inverness. <laughs> and on the guitar from County Dublin, Mr. Tony Byrne. <laughs> and uh, we stole him from Braybach tonight for the first half on the double bass, Mr. James Lindsay. On the bazooki from Dublin, Ireland, Mr. Eamon Dooley. I'm gonna 
Vera. Well, thank you so much. Uh, you've been wonderful, and it's been great to play for you uh, for this first half of the show. The second half is going to be just brilliant, though. i uh, really looking forward to hearing uh, Breibach and Biolach and some more. And uh, before we finish this first half, uh, a few things to say. We have CDs with us, and we don't want them. <laughs> if we don't get rid of them, Boris Johnson's going to put tariffs on them. <laughs> I can say these things, I'm Irish, I've got to. But uh, of course, it goes without saying a massive thanks to everybody here at Celtic Colours. It's such a pleasure to be here. My first Celtic Colours was 20 years ago, and I still remember it like yesterday. And it's great to see familiar faces here. I could even say I've even got family now in English Town, so if anybody from English Town is here, we'll play this last one for you. And, uh, but uh, a huge thanks to, um, to Dawn especially and to uh, all the volunteers, all the organisers at the festival. I know they've put a huge amount of work into it every year and uh, please show them your appreciation. Absolutely. So we're just going to finish off with one mode and uh, we're going to finish off with a run rig song. This is one called Fui my Vlad and uh, I'd like to dedicate this last set to Rill. And uh, yeah, hope to see you all again soon. Thanks so much for being so kind to us and uh, see you later. <laughs> If you were a son, I'd be 
Thank you. everyone. And how about Emma Stevens? Awesome. We're going to take a little break for 15 minutes. Don't forget uh, to fill out the ballot on the back of your ticket. We'll make a draw later on in the program for a Celtic Colors songbook and a Celtic Colors CD from last, uh, last year. Nine tracks from nine concerts recorded live last year and a very cool mounted poster signed by everybody on stage here tonight. So relax the next 15 minutes and then come back for Beolak and Breivak. The spirit of our island is strong. She is vibrant and rooted in culture. When she sleeps, we call it winter. When she celebrates her beauty, we call it autumn. And when she sings, we call it Celtic Colors. For hundreds of years in these mountains and along these shores, we've kept our traditions alive. When we speak, when we play, when we dance, Now, we invite people from far and wide to share our island. Add a voice, lend an ear, and try a step. To see, to hear, to experience. Cape Breton Island's Celtic Colors International Festival.
Nova Scotia's Cape Breton Island will inspire like no other place. Explore this natural beauty. Let its wild energy lift your spirit. Be adventurous, be in awe, and be truly free. Connect with our island and reconnect with yourself. This fall, be here. Cape Breton Island, your heart will never leave. One note can change everything. It begins a melody that leads to a song that is sung by many and enjoyed by more. TD is proud to be an instrument of change by supporting 90 community programs and over 80 festivals across Canada. Because one note can start something big, build confidence, and bring a community together. Welcome to Cape Breton Island, the Celtic heart of North America. This small island welcomes you with its huge heart. Here, you can jump into the culture, dance to lively fiddle tunes, learn a Gaelic milling song, and enjoy traditional meals. Experience firsthand North America's only living Celtic culture. Music is the heartbeat of the island, with sessions always close at hand. You can soak it in or jam with some of the world's finest Celtic musicians. The stunning, diverse beauty of this award-winning island. Its sweeping hills, popping colors, and majestic waters promises to both soothe and invigorate all who visit. Cape Breton offers down-home hospitality with its soul-inspiring music and earnest storytelling. You may arrive a visitor, but are sure to leave as a friend. Start your journey today at CelticHeart.ca. Ready? I was born ready. Sid, it's working. Hockey card season is back at Tim Hortons. Get your Tim Hortons NHL trading cards today. Collect them all, plus play on the app for a chance to meet Sid. Hope you uh, get a Nate McKinnon in there. I'm extremely proud to be Nova Scotian. Art is something we want to make sure is continuing to tell our stories. Culture is what makes us human. Art, music, film. It is what adds color to our world. And if you have a vibrant arts community, those that are looking at moving somewhere, that's a part of what they're looking for. Because Nova Scotia Gaming has support for culture. All of these barriers are sort of removed and you can like really have an opportunity to grow. service calls can happen anywhere. We'll be there to make the link. Thank you. 
Atlantic Lottery is proud to sponsor the Celtic Colors International Festival. Last year, I had the chance to explore the beautiful Cabot Trail, so let's take a look at all the places that I went and all the cool things that you can experience at this year's festival. Through areas of study like history, Gaelic, and music, Cape Breton University recognizes the important role traditions play in the cultural life of Cape Breton Island. Working together with Celtic Colors, Cape Breton University is helping to bring live traditional music, song, and dance into schools across Cape Breton Island. Cape Breton University and Celtic Colors, working to keep our traditions alive. Our coastline here in Cape Breton is an unkept beauty and people don't tamper with it too much. It's just left in its most pure state. And same with the music. It too is very organic in how it is learned and how it is passed on. The comment I most often get is, we're going to Cape Breton, what should we do? What should we see? And so I always direct them to a square dance in West Mabu or any of the square dances. As long as they get a square dance in, that's really important. I think that's the highlight. And I can remember the most awesome house parties and the music would go on far into the night. I remember falling asleep in a corner, you know, and you'd feel the vibration of the stomp of the foot from the fiddler and you'd hear the tunes just wafting through the air. And I used to be so comforted by that sound. My name is Natalie McMaster. I'm from Troy, Cape Breton Island. Wow, this is a beautiful find.
The greatest thing about medicine is our medicines stood the test of time. They're gifts from the creator, but they're also <laughs> the knowledge that's passed on from generation to generation. This is when you were born. And then here, these are all your medicines, all the things that you're gonna do in life. And then when you go back, you're an elder. And you walk like this, and you're hunched over until you back in the spirit world. Our ancestors, our grandfathers, our grandmothers were able to treat every ailment known to man. If I have a, a, an ailment, I'll ask any one of my brothers who are medicine keepers. I know where they got it. I know the family that harvested it. So I know their prayers are already strong. When I receive a medicine, I offer tobacco for it and I pray that that medicine will help me in any way. It's, they're delicious, they're full of vitamin C, and it's just amazing. The medicine is my sense of place, my sense of belonging, what I've learned, and what I'm willing to pass on to future generations. We think we're number one because we're the home of a strong Mi'kmaq culture since time of memorial. Because we have more fiddlers per capita than anywhere in the world. We think we're number one because we have the finest lobster and seafood. We have one of the most scenic drives in the world. We think we're number one because we have the largest historical reconstruction in North America. Because the Bredor Lakes are UNESCO biosphere. Because we have amazing trails and we have one of the top national parks in Canada. Because of our rich Acadian culture and joie de vie. We think we're number one because we have world-class golf courses. Nova Scotia's Cape Breton Island has called out to the hearts of travelers for hundreds of years, inspiring their minds and reviving their spirits. Follow your heart. It will lead you to the journey of a lifetime. Experience one of the world's most scenic drives, the Cabot Trail, rising from the sea, clinging to mountains, a winding staircase that will take you from majestic ocean vistas to quiet fishing villages. Plan a few days to enjoy every moment. Savor a masterpiece. Our island is renowned as a hiker's paradise, a challenging beauty that calls out to be explored. Breathtaking landscapes await you. Travel through time at the Fortress of Lewisburg, the largest historical reconstruction of its kind in North America. Walk the streets where world powers fought for control of a continent. Cape Breton, one of the first multicultural societies in North America, the heart of the Mi'kmaq Nation, where ancestry is treasured and deep and alive in the roots of communities. Delve into the mind of a genius. Learn of our storied past. You may even learn something about yourself. Be moved by our living cultures. Join in a square dance. Step to the jigs and the rollicking reels. Watch our artisans at work creating their treasures. Find a unique serenity as you pause in the heart of the island or chart a course on the Bredor Lakes, a designated UNESCO biosphere and Canada's largest inland sea. Leave your footprints on our shores. They will be welcomed by gentle waters and rolling surf. Anticipate larger-than-life encounters. The island resonates with the voices of generations before us. We hold our traditions close, and it's a tradition to share what we have with our visitors. Discover and embrace Cape Breton Island. 
your heart will never leave.
Hello, everybody. We're back. Time to make our draw and to assist me in this. We have a very high-priced assistant here this evening. Please welcome the artistic director of Celtic Colors, Ms. Don Beaton. Hi, Don. Give me a hash. How's your Celtic Colors? I've had a wonderful, wonderful Celtic Colors. So thanks to everyone and all the artists for making it a really special year. All right, and thanks to you for all your work. So we have, uh, we're going to make a draw first for the Celtic Colors collection compiled by Paul Cranford. It's a songbook and a tune book. Or oh, you want to display it? Okay, Don's going to display it. She's going to do the Vanna White for us. That is why she's here. There you go. There's the Celtic Colors songbook. And you're always left holding the bucket, Don, so I'll do it this time around. All right. Whoops. We've got to put that one back in. KPMG might be watching. All right. Rita Peel from the points from just down the road. Are you here, Rita? You don't have to come up on stage. Your stuff will be at the merchandise table there. So Rita Peel from the point in West Bay, not far away. All right, you want to make a draw for... Okay, so this is for a very cool mounted poster uh, signed by everybody performing on stage here this evening. And last year's Celtic Colors CD, nine tracks from nine shows over nine days. And you can pre-order this year's on the Celtic Colors website. And the winner is, you gave it to me because you couldn't read the writing. <laughs> Tyler Brown of Smith's Falls from Ontario. <laughs> thank you very much, Tyler. And thank you, Don Beaton, for everything. And you can sleep in November. <laughs> Don has Thanksgiving on October 31st every year. And thank you, everybody, for, uh, for coming and for visiting. So uh, we want to uh, acknowledge a couple of people without whom the um, Celtic Colors would not go ahead. We want to acknowledge uh, TD Bank, who is our presenting sponsor this year. Thank you very much to TD Bank. And we also wanted to acknowledge uh, the federal, provincial, and municipal governments. As a matter of fact, uh, federal government through ACOA and through Canadian Heritage, the provincial government through the Department of Communities, Culture and Heritage, and all five municipal governments in Cape Breton Island, thank you very much. And very apropos of being in Port Hawkesbury, a nod too to Port Hawkesbury Paper, who supports this festival, and we have Port Hawkesbury Paper employees and guests here tonight, so a shout out to them. Thank you very much for coming. And how are you doing, Zavarians? How are the St. FX people doing? Still making her? And Larsh, how are you, Larsh? All right, having a good time? Very nice. All right, so with our second half, we are going to round out uh, the final concert for Celtic Colors number 23 by bookending with our two artists in residence for this year. These folks have helped shape this concert. They've also helped shape the voice of the kind of music we're celebrating with the international uh, Celtic Colors Festival with both their wider, um, or wider uh, networks and through the assistance they've given to the festival this year. And of course, we're bookending it from both sides of the Atlantic. From Scotland, we have a group that's been nominated at the Trad Music Awards, the BBC Two Awards. Uh, they've also uh, won Live Act of the Year and Scottish Traditional Act of the Year. From our side of the Atlantic, we have a group that was actually born at Celtic Colors from a late-night jam session at the Festival Club. You never know what's going to happen at the Festival Club or what's going to be born. <laughs> they have since won uh, uh, a lot of accolades. They've been nominated for ECMAs and the Canadian Folk Music Award. It is our great pleasure to bring the two sides of the Atlantic together tonight to round out this year's Celtic Colors with your artists and residents, please welcome Beolach and Brebach.
Thank you so very much. How's it going, Port Hawkesbury? So great to be here. We have had a tremendous week. We feel so very fortunate that we got to spend so much time with Freybach and work on lots of music, and we're going to play all of it for you tonight. We started in Scotland in August. We met up with these guys and started working on some sets. So we've done a con few concerts, and we've you know, played a few tunes in somebody's room and all things like that. And you and I went to the Superstore today and each got a cucumber for the bags under our eyes. <laughs> <laughs> We've all been waking up in the morning with 7,300 steps on our Fitbits before we even get up for breakfast. It's been some late nights. Ah! Anyway, we're having such a great time. And uh, we're really kind of sad that it's over tonight, but we're going to play at the Festival Club tonight, I think, as well. <laughs> Woo! So, so glad to be here, and we started out there with a big blast that we put together when we were in Scotland. We called them MSR sets, March Stretch, Stress Bays, and Real Sets. You want to add anything there, Ewan? You can maybe introduce the next set we're going to do. No, I'm still full from eating that cucumber. <laughs> no, I was just, uh, would just, yeah, I'd like to say on behalf of Brebach, what a, a great privilege, privilege it is to, to be invited out to, to be part of this. A fantastic collaboration and be part of this wonderful festival. So a huge thanks to, to everyone that makes it possible. Cheers. We're gonna, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna continue with a, a set uh, from the new uh, Biolic record. I don't know if you heard that that landed yesterday. You. Yeah. <laughs> what set are we playing?
Lovely stuff. Beautiful Alan McDonald tune there called The, the Road to Loch Nambjarnas. And uh, Bjolloch are, are taking a wee five minute intermission for us to play a, a number for you. <laughs> and this is a set of ours from our brand new album. Um, something that unites us as, as two separate bands, something that unites us as dance and uh, we've, we've definitely got a lot of passion for, for dance and this is definitely a dancing tune so if you feel your feet moving feel free to get up this is called Knees Up in Hanoi How is everybody doing tonight? 
You're having a good time? Great. We are too. We have to pinch ourselves. We are so lucky to be able to do this. And uh, we're going to keep rolling here. Uh, the next group is a, a group off our brand new album. Uh, we just put out an album um, last week. It's called All Hands. And um, it's been 15 years since the last Bioloch album, so we're very happy to have it. And we're going to play a track for you here, um, and it's called Kilts on Fire.
Thank you, everybody. Would you believe every reel in that last group of tunes was actually named after food? The first one was uh, potatoes uh, and herring, Pantatha Skatan. The uh, second one was uh, making butter, and the third one was um, kale and pudding. Anyway, we must have been hungry when we were putting that group of tunes together or something. <laughs> Part of the tradition, as anybody from home knows, um, includes music like we're playing tonight and the language, which is so important, and then a dance style that is incredibly important to it all. And it's all interconnected, the song, the language, the dance, the music. And uh, all of us being dancers grew up listening to the music, of course, but also seeing the dancers dance you know, in the kitchen. You might dance in the kitchen, you might dance at the grocery store, you might dance in an elevator, I've done that once or twice too. And, uh, but it just, it just reflects how important to everything it, uh, the dancing is. Um, you know, it kind of keeps the music from changing too much. Oftentimes people have said that in the past. The reason, not only because of the geographic isolation of Cape Breton, but because we had such a strong dance tradition, the music was able to kind of maintain those really strong roots and didn't kind of change so much. And um, it's a, a form of dance that is very relaxed. There are no competitions. People just get up from four to 94. If you can get up and shake a leg and give a step, you're often encouraged at a home or at a dance. And at a dance, um, not only are there set dances, but they'll have something they call the dancer's cue, where there may be um, the fiddler to kind of take a break of playing sets all night, uh, jigs and reels. They may just kind of rip into a couple of strass bays and Somebody gets up and dances this form of dance, a strass bay, and it kind of goes into the reel. And then one by one, people who are in the hall that night for the dance get up and show a couple of steps. And it's a, it's a beautiful tradition that we have, and we're so very fortunate to have some amazing dancers here on the island. So, uh, yeah, we just wanted to make note of that for you. Wink, wink. <laughs>
Thanks to the amazing dancers there. Yep. We're going to keep things going now with uh, a couple of tunes off of our latest album. Um, a couple of tunes. The first one's uh, called The Open Ball, about a, a big shindig they have in, in Oban on the West Coast. And then we follow that with a composition from James Duncan McKenzie about some uh, kayaking fun we had in uh, Thunder Bay. And it's called uh, Thunderstorm on Thunder Bay, so we'll play that now. Thanks.
very much, everybody. We're not having any fun up here at all. No, not at all. Um, as I think Wendy or Maddie already mentioned, Biolik is incredibly, incredibly happy to be working with such an amazing band out of Scotland, Braybach. And you guys are just, we listen to you guys all the time, and it's kind of like a dream come true. So thank you very much for, for being you. And, uh, and thank you to the festival from both, uh, both bands. Uh, Celtic Colors has given us just a wonderful opportunity and um, not everybody gets to do this for a living and I can tell you every one of us is incredibly grateful um, to the opportunities that we've been given through music. So thank you Celtic Colors for that. And uh, yes, very much so. And the other thing that we all have talked about many times and we want to thank you all for, um, for buying a ticket. Because really, live music is not the same if all the seats are empty and we're up here. We're going to have fun anyway, but it's way more fun if the, you guys are here. So thank you for supporting live music and an amazing festival at Celtic Colors. So we're going to do one more here for you. And um, we did it the other night. Uh, we had a, a concert together. And I won't get into too much of the detail, but it's a, a tune written by a local fellow who's no longer with us, but was an amazing uh, composer, fiddle player, piano player, and he left his stamp on the Cape Breton music. His name was John Morris Rankin. And uh, yes, yep, definitely deserves a uh, round of applause. And so uh, the last tune that um, I think he wrote or has come about that he, he wrote um, is called The Last March. And it was found by a friend of his, one story anyway, um, whether or not it's accurate, one uh, story says that a friend of his, Howie McDonald, found this tune uh, locked away in a, uh, a keyboard. Some of the keyboards can kind of record, and then you can play back things, or if you have an idea, you can put it in. Anyhow, through chance, um, he found it one day, and so Jim Morris's wife named it The Last March, and we're going to play that for you now. Please have a safe drive to the festival club, because I know you're all going, right? We are. You guys need to, too. And uh, again, thank you to Celt Colors, thank you all to you guys, and we'll see you down the road somewhere on. Take care. Thank you. 
Viola and Breda. You. Don't worry, we're not letting them go. We're not letting them go anywhere. As a matter of fact, we're going to invite everybody else back up on the stage. How was that? What a show. And also, thank you to the people that in the program backstage, they were calling the unsung heroes of dance. Wasn't that lovely? These are the people who, day in and day out, by rights of doing it for fun and family, keep the tradition alive, and as Max so aptly put it, keep the connection between the dancing and the music, and keep the music true. Um, I want to say thank you very much to everybody who's watching us on the live stream tonight. A big thank you from everybody in Port Hawkesbury here. And if I may, I'd like to acknowledge our live stream partners, Destination Cape Breton, the Celtic Heart of North America, Support for Culture, and the Vibe Creative Group. How many people are here tonight from outside Canada, from outside the country? Wow. God love you, you don't have an election on, do you? I was just saying to someone backstage, in the last 10 days, I've hosted four different federal election debates. I'm just happy to not be moderating candidates tonight. <laughs> An awesome show to be able to do that. That'll be, we'll be back to it soon enough, Mac. That's very true. Um, and also, don't forget about the Festival Club. With your ticket stub, you'll get 50% off, because as the uh, official closing of the show is happening here tonight before our very eyes, don't worry, if you can keep those eyes open till the wee hours of the morning, there's more to be done at the Festival Club where Bayolik was born, what, 20 years ago? 20 years ago, Bayolik was born at the Festival Club. And uh, who knows what will be born tonight if you spend a little extra time there, but everybody's always reluctant to put the guitar down at the end of the night. We want to say thank you very much to a very special group of people without whom Celtic Colors would not occur. These are the people who drive, who bake, who serve food, who take your tickets. A team of 400 strong at last count. A big thank you to all the Celtic Colors volunteers, please, from the audience here tonight. And thank you to our audience members who keep this Celtic Colors thing going. And before we close, Celtic Colors, number 23, officially, please welcome back to the stage, everybody.